construction, claims, questions, and answers. 1. Which time schedule recovery or baseline be used for the time impact analysis of delays incurred after granted EOT? 2. Can a delay event which was not formally notified but later returned T? 2. Can a delay event which was not formally notified but later turns out to be a critical delay event be considered for EOT claim? 3. What options the contractor has in case of force majeure to claim for cost incurred? For if you prove a concurrent delay are you entitled to prolongation costs? 5. Can we refer to UK common law in the GCC, especially in the case of concurrency? 6. What is a global claim? 7. Can the contractor claim for loss of opportunity cost? 8. Can contractor claim for road tax increases on material supply material suppliers affecting concrete supply costs? 9. What is the procedure for claiming delays due to client-nominated contractors? 10. What are the prolongation cost claims? Question 1. If a recovery schedule is submitted by the contractor to recover the delay in the project for a particular data date and after the data date there was a delay in the schedule caused by the employer, will the recovery or baseline be used for the time impact analysis? Answer. Presumably the recovery program would include all delays that have occurred and extensions of time that have been awarded and would have been agreed as a revised program. In such a case. The contractor's original program or baseline would no longer be relevant and the recovery program would be the program against which to measure the effect of any further employer delays. Employer delays. Question 2. Question. Can a delay event which was not formally notified but later turns out to be a critical delay event be considered for EOT claim? Note the engineer was made away along with many other various delay events in a construction project. Answer. According to subclause 20.1 Contractors Claims of FIDIC 1999, if a delay event leading to a claim is not notified within 28 days for the event then the time for completion shall not be, extend not be extended, the contractor shall not be entitled to additional payment, and the employer shall be discharged from all liability in connection with the claim. This is very clear and contractors should ignore it at their peril. Giving and recording advice to the engineer in meetings does not satis satisfy FIDIC's requirements for the submission of notices as set out in subclause 1.3 communications so this cannot be regarded as a notice. Depending on the circumstances, there may be situations under civil law jurisdictions whereby an argument may be put forward to defend against a time bar, but my recommendation to contractors is always to submit formal notices that are required by the contract and submit them in the way prescribed in the contract. This will avoid you having to employ specialists to help get you out of the hole that you have dug yourself into by disregarding your obligations. Question 3. Question. What options the contractor has in case of force majeure to claim for cost incurred? Answer. Does this situation provide enough grounds to submit a claim? If from performing his duties because of events, then this would qualify as a force majeure event under the provisions subclause 19. For consequences of force majeure allows the contractor to claim for cost incurred. If the contract has not been terminated, the contractor is obliged to continue to, pro to continue to provide some costs like the guarantees and bonds, so the costs of doing so may be claimed. The situation would probably provide sufficient grounds to claim for an extension of time and the recovery of any cost incurred. FIDIC provides entitlement to the contractor to claim, so be an owner's risk. Question 4. Question. If you prove a concurrent delay are you entitled to prolongation costs? Answer. The general principle is that if a concurrent delay occurs, 
the, contra the contractor is entitled to time but not prolongation costs. This is based upon the principle that had the contractor not caused delay, the project would have been delayed anyway because of the employer risk events, so delay damages may not be applied. The contractor, however, may not benefit not benefit from his own mistakes so may, therefore, not recoup costs when he has also contributed to the delay. Question 5 Question, can we refer to UK common law in the GCC, especially its of concurrency? Answer, the contract should state the applicable law to which it is subject. The GCC countries are based on civil law, so UK law would generally not be applicable. Having said that, case law may sometimes be applied across legal jurisdictions, especially when it deals with technical, rather than legal, principles. A good source of reference which may be used to justify claims and technical matters contained therein is the Society of Construction Laws Delay and Disruption Protocol, which deals with concurrent delay. Question 6. Question. What is a global claim? Answer. A global claim usually occurs when the contractor has not performed his obligations to submit claims for each delay will not complete on time and will soon have delay penalties imposed. Basically, in this situation, the contractor cites all delay events that have occurred and attempts to claim an extension of time for the completion date that he achieved. In other words, the contractor is saying that all these delays delays occurred so we are entitled to an extension of time to when we finished the project. This is not a good strategy for several reasons. First, contracts usually require claims to be submitted within a strict time frame. Second, in order to prove an extension of time is warranted, it is necessary to link the cause with the effect. In other words, it must be demonstrated that each particular delay event had a direct effect on the time for completion. This is the reason that arbitrators and the courts will seldom favor the contractor if his submits a global claim. Question 7 Question, can the contractor claim for loss of opportunity cost? Answer Generally, yes and this would typically be calculated as part of a prolongation cost claiming head office overheads and profit such as Endon, Icleody, or Hudson's. As the contractor could miss taking another potential project using his resources had he not been delayed by the employer of the current project owing to his resources being blocked for more than he had foreseen. Seen. Question 8. Question. Can contractor claim for road tax increases on material suppliers affecting concrete supply costs? Is this a contractor's risk or an employee change in legislation is? Answer. If the causation is the increase in road tax, then this would fall under change in legislation, so in my opinion, this would be a claimable cost point of view of the engineer. I would only be prepared to pay Question for cost nine. incurred as a direct result Question, of the road what is tax the procedure increase for claiming delays due to client nominated contractor. Answer. Answer. It would depend on the contract and how it allocates delays caused by nominated subcontractors. Sub Clause 5.2 Objection to nomination of the EFIDIC Red Book allows the contractor to object to a nomination at the time of nomination. FIDIC is somewhat great about the situation where the contractor has not objected and a nominated subcontractor delayed the project, but I think a reasonable interpretation is to look at subclause 4. For subcontractors which states that the contractor shall be responsible for the acts or defaults of any subcontractor, his agents or employees, as if they were the acts or defaults of the contractor. This does not exclude nominated subcontractors, 
so would not allow the contractor to claim against the employer. The correct recourse would be to claim against the subcontractor for losses or costs in incurred due to the subcontractor's delay. Question 10. Question. What are the prolongation claims? Answer. Claims for prolongation costs are where the contractor claims for time-related costs incurred as a result of an extension of time and will include for such things as site management and administration, non-productive personnel, site establishment, non-productive plant and equipment, transport, insurances, bonds and head office overheads. 